There's two types of people here. There's warriors and warriors. That's it. And I'm asking you all to be a warrior. Stand in the fucking light. It's Thursday 6th of August and I'm going out a walk with Alan to tell him about the big day tomorrow. I'm returning to Spain for another meeting with the mother, Mother Ayahuasca. Ayahuasca is a psychedelic plant medicine that has been used for thousands of years in the Amazon jungle, but it's now quickly spreading all over the world helping countless people heal what's ailing them and transform their lives. I've been on a journey with ayahuasca since it first came in my path in 2017 and it's had a profound positive impact on my life. This weekend I'll be having my 6th and 7th ayahuasca ceremonies at a retreat called Amoraleza, a special place located out in nature high up in the Spanish Sierra Nevada mountains. You talked with real passion when you were talking earlier on about your experiences with ayahuasca and the Moraleza. Tell us about this place, it sounds really magical mate. That's the perfect word for it Alan, it is magical. And I've got a friend Ryan who describes it just like that as well. He's been a few more times than I have and I'm going to be meeting him tomorrow. He's picking us up from the airport. Um, it's funny how I actually got in contact with these guys because I, I wasn't aware there even was a, ret a retreat in this part of Spain. A few years ago, um, I decided to write a book about ayahuasca. I wanted to interview people about their life transformations. Yeah. I spent the next seven months reaching out to retreats, contacting them and asking them just to let me know about deep experiences people have had where they've, they've been at maybe a really low place and they've been able to turn their lives around just with this traditional medicine. So I had reached out to Amora Laser that's run by two people, a couple, Ver uh, Veronica and Lorenzo and Veronica was one of the first people who got back in touch with me and she was keen to be interviewed and speak about the place so we just had a chat on the phone and when she started describing the place I just knew straight away I wanted to go there Like the dome, it's a very beautiful structure um, and when you go in it's night it's When we arrived at Amora Laser, there were around 35 people from all over the world attending to drink ayahuasca and go on a deep journey within. Each of them had their own story, their own life struggles and were taking the courageous step to drink ayahuasca to uncover the root of their problems. The natives in the Amazon rainforest who faithfully use ayahuasca for healing say that western society is broken. They tell us that all of our ills are down to losing our connection with spirit. They brew ayahuasca from two specific plants, the ayahuasca vine and chacruna leaves, in order for people to then properly reconnect with themselves. Intriguingly, the shamans explain that there is a female spirit connected with this plant medicine known as mother ayahuasca. The ancient tradition of drinking this medicine tells us that this spirit is dedicated to the good of all humanity and she wants to help us become the best version of ourselves. But due to its psychedelic effects, ayahuasca has been made illegal by most governments who mistakenly consider it a drug and completely misunderstand its true purpose for healing. Ayahuasca guides people on a visionary inner journey for several hours 
and it has the key to our subconscious minds where all our past traumas are stored. Once we clearly see these traumas, we can process them and finally let them go. Although the ayahuasca experience can be very difficult, this incredible medicine gives people the power to heal themselves mentally, emotionally and physically, often when they have exhausted every other option. Uh, so I'm Graham, I'm from the UK, but I, I now live in Spain, um, on the East Coast, and I've been here about 10 months, and this is my second uh, ayahuasca experience. I, I suffered for most of my uh, adult life with bouts of depression, um, quite debilitating. I tried lots of different normal Western style remedies, antidepressants, uh, mood stabilizers, psychotherapy, psychoanalysis, um, Alexander technique, the, the list, the list goes on over about 20 years, 20 year period. It's got really, really bad around the age of 30 when I should be doing, I should be in my career, I should be doing, I should be doing good stuff, I should be, I should be making use of my qualifications and all of my experience and things like that, but I wasn't able to because I was two weeks, two weeks I'd be good and then five days I'd be, I'd be no use to anyone. So relationships went by the by, I got divorced, I had serious, you know, God knows how many relationships. And they, they just had to walk away. Well, I, ha I had to walk away or they had to walk away. So it, was, it affected everything, you know, it affected my appetite, affected my relationships, my job, my outlook on life, my attitude to um, the future, to having kids. Um, so yeah, it, it, everything. And something, I, I heard a podcast by a comedian and he'd been to Peru, been to South America, and he'd, he'd, um, he'd experienced ayahuasca. And this is about four years ago, and I just I just thought, what is... This? And he, he had this revelationary experience, as he was also very depressed at the time. And he came and he said it was just a transformation for him. And um, and I really I really responded to this. I really thought, um, well, there's, there's got to be something in it. The more, and the more I researched, uh, looking at videos online, basically, the more I realised that um, it's this wasn't an isolated case. This is this is repeated and repeated and repeated, and people are having these incredible experiences. Um, and I thought there's got to be this has got to be something to, um, to try. So basically, that was four years ago, and it's taken it took it took about four years to eventually arrive at where I where I am now. Really, it was only a month ago. <laughs> So this is all. This is very. This is all quite recent. Uh, a month ago, on the east coast of Spain near Alicante. So back back to the the backstory. I guess is basically. So I tried. I tried everything. I thought I tried everything. Um, even going on some really powerful mood stabilizers. And I always had this diagnosis of some kind of bipolar disorder. And I never really accepted. I never really believed in it. And. Um, but when the, 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 the last one happened about two months ago, and I thought, well, I better, I better go on the, news, the, the really powerful news stabilizer. And then the opportunity came when lockdown eased to go on the ayahuasca ceremony. And it was that revelationary, um, it was that revelationary experience where I was basically catapulted into another dimension. And I basically was able to resolve my father's death. Um, in in a, in a matter of seconds, and it was it was just so powerful. It was just uh, it was life changing, and it still it remains it remains life changing. And it's something I fundamentally believe that I've actually overcome this, and it's it's the medicine that that's done that basically. My father took his own life when I was fifteen, and um, obviously it still it still brings back emotions, but um, and things spiraled out of control. He ended up taking his own life, but I was the one who had to kind of, I had to keep the family together for a number of years because my mum, unfortunately, she she couldn't function properly for, for a long time. In the, in the back of my mind, I, I knew that the reason was was his suicide and the aftermath and the, and, 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 the, and the tragedy of the aftermath, because it is the aftermath of suicide. I think, you know, I think a lot of people will agree. Obviously, it's it's traumatic to lose someone under any circumstances. But when it's suicide, there's so much 
anger, frustration, and um, unresolved issues because they've gone and they've checked out, and you can't ask them why. You can't. You can't sort of deal with it properly. So uh, a, a lot of time, uh, thirty-one years of just this uh, roller coaster ride of of it's like this energy it was always energy which was i knew which was like you know sometimes it was bad sometimes it was good but it wrecked it wrecked so many things in my life and it was when um when i was in the first ceremony i didn't expect this but it was when in the first ceremony i was in another dimension um after a, after a uh, a while three hours maybe at, at the first ceremony and as i said before it was a, it was a lyric in one of the songs that they were playing shot me straight back to my father who was into his music that's where I get yeah he was really into his music and basically uh, it took me straight back to him and I was in in a few seconds I saw him as a sort of form of energy and then he was happy and everything was fine and then and then he was gone and it was such like it was such a, a huge uh, shock in a way it's it such, such a massive just the, the, the speed of it I expected to go through uh, loads of, of anguish and, 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 and struggle with things because it because there was so much because I was hurting so badly that I thought well I've got to, I've got to go I've got to go down again to come back up but it was different it was like I was I was uh, I was in a beautiful space and I was in a beautiful dimension and he came and he was happy and then he was gone again and I knew I knew at that point that basically I don't have to worry about him anymore so that was the if that was the big thing I was always I always um, felt sorry for him you know I always felt sorry for how it happened that I couldn't speak to him afterwards so to know that he was happy that was it, it was done. It was done. And um, he's in a he's in a he's in a great place. And I know I am not I'm not spirit I wasn't a spiritual person, but I'm um, I now kind of I now believe in a in a different dimension that we do go to after we die. And I was there for a brief period and it's it's beautiful. It's just beautiful. So. We usually run retreats. We often do several weekends in a row. We like to go in three or four week um, segments. And we welcome between 30 and 35 people each weekend. Um, we have our team, which is usually eight people, which are inside the ceremony. And then we have a supporting team outside who are in the kitchen and doing all the cleaning work and everything else. So. We get to about between 50 to 60 people, including the children, um, every weekend. Yeah, so I find that the last few months have been really an incredible time on the planet, where with the lockdown that most people have experienced around the world, it really has forced people to sort of stop their busy lives and, and take a look inside. And a lot of people have been through really strong processes, um, just having to actually be with themselves or be with their families and not be, be so busy. And it's incredible the amount of people that have contacted me during that time who are really seeking for deep healing, who are now understanding that they're responsible for, for their healing and they're responsible as well for what's going on, on the planet. And the people that are coming to us now, um, more so than ever, are really people who are wanting transformation. Uh, before we had a lot more people who were coming just out of curiosity or because ayahuasca was maybe getting a bit popular. Um, but really, since the, the, the lockdown, I feel almost everybody is coming with something really strong that they're wanting to heal and just really finally wanting to let go. Because we are stepping into a new era. Um, it's, really, it's really tangible um, to me. 
And I feel that right now is a time where we just need to let go of all the things that we've been holding on to. There's no more space to hold on to traumas. There's no more space to be victims. Um, it's time to really take responsibility for ourselves, for our pain, and, and release it so that we can ascend to, to the next level. Ever since I met Ayahuasca, my life has just been pure, pure magic. Um, things just come, synchronicities, the people that come, everything just kind of takes its, it follows its path. Um, it just takes shape. And when I see people who come here on the weekend and they come from their lives, from cities, with all their problems, a lot of people come very closed. A lot of people come who have no connection with their emotions, no connection with their hearts. And they leave here and they look like completely different people. And we have many people that come back as well um, every few months, every year, every few years. And just to see the transformation that occurs in such a short period of time is that that's pure magic. I mean, one or two ceremonies can really transform people. Moraleza runs ayahuasca retreats most weekends from April until September. Often people return every year saying that each time they drink the medicine, life becomes easier, lighter and more enjoyable. The ayahuasca ceremonies take place in this huge dome, the first one on the Friday night, second on the Saturday night and on the Sunday there is an integration process. This is a sharing circle where people speak from the heart about what they experienced during their ceremonies and the big life lessons that Mother Ayahuasca taught them. The ceremonies themselves begin at 7.30pm and often go on until 4am. And while the Ayahuasca experience involves purging and can take you to a dark place temporarily, this is a big part of releasing heavy negative energy that has been weighing us down for years and sometimes decades. This brings a lightness and creates space for all the gifts that Mother Ayahuasca has for you. Self-love, compassion, acceptance and so much more. And with the uplifting live music played throughout the ceremonies, the energy in the dome becomes electric and people dance around the fire pit for hours. I've done plenty of dancing in very happy states over the years, but nothing even comes close to the feelings experienced in the Amora Laser Dome. Ayahuasca drinkers are given a blessing using sage before they take their place in the ceremony dome. This is an ancient spiritual ritual to help clear negative energies ahead of your ayahuasca journey. In the dome itself, each person has a mat, a blanket, sick bucket for purging and tissues. The ceremony begins with happy, a traditional plant medicine powder which is blown through each nostril and is like a thunderbolt to your nervous system. Thereafter, the fire pit is lit, the first glass of ayahuasca is served, the music starts and then the journey begins. After a long eventful night inside the dome, the group gathered at the communal kitchen area to eat, chat and share some of their personal experiences with each other. I got chatting to Tim, a brilliant kind Englishman who was sat near to me in the ceremony and has since become a good friend. Tim had an incredible night drinking the medicine. Ayahuasca, <laughs> it's uh, 
yeah, it's changed. It, it really has changed my life. Um, and the people here are very good and compassionate and warm. And it's such a bonding experience. Dancing on the fire, dancing, chanting, singing, ayahuasca taking control. The women look stunningly beautiful and graceful. And the guys are really getting into the dancing and there's a massive release of, of um, energy. I'm going to try and get my lad from, uh, come over from Denmark and do it. Your, if son, I, your son? Yeah. And really, truly, um, if I'd have done this in, in my 20s, I genuinely, truly believe my life would have been more wholesome. I mean that. More together. It sort of uh, reorders your mind, you know. And what type of transformation has the medicine brought you? I think for me in my life, you know, um, I was well on the way to, you know, I kind of got to such a low point that through meditation, I have very strong vipassana meditation practice, so it was already, I was already starting to feel comfortable in myself. But what it, the medicine did, it opened my doors of perception. So I had an understanding of what I was or what I thought I was. And this impacted how I had relationships with other people. But as I started to do medicine and your sense of self starts to expand, you start to realize you know, what can only be described as a, the truth of what this actually is. And this is purely because we live in a very limited expression of our consciousness through these five senses. And as these doors of perception open and expand, you open and expand. And all the things that you think you are, or, you, you know, you, all the, the voices, all the negative things that you, you think you are, just disappear. You don't have to do anything. They just leave you. And what starts to replace them is much more stronger sensations, much more, many more feelings that resonate, such as connection, love, joy, wholeness, community, all the things that, you know, many of us have felt at, mo at some point in our life, but we've kind of suppressed as we go on this journey to to find other things like wealth or whatever it is that we, we kind of, we, we go after. Um, this is the primary, the primary thing that medicine can give you. It gives you this realization. And once you have this realization, there's no going back. It's freedom because you can't unsee what you've seen. And this is why now I devote my life to helping people to have these experiences that bring profound change not only for them but for their families for their mothers for their fathers for their brothers sisters children it changes everything now in my own experience of opening you know i had a very difficult relationship with my parents where my dad was very abusive my, my mom then kicked me out of the house and through that there was a lot of hate um, there was a lot of disconnection and now we're in a process through medicine for our forgiveness, of acceptance, of moving forward. And, you know, we are now in a process where we are connecting back. And, you know, my dad's now 63 and it's the first time he told me he loved me was 10 days ago. So I know this works because I'm coming to him from a position of openness and willingness to and forgiveness. And it's only through these things, these kinds of emotions and sensations, can we heal ourselves and others. And it's very hard to break that within yourself without these tools. And these sacred tools have been used for humanity for, for the, every single advanced civilization that we know. There's evidence that they use plants in some way. Sometimes it wasn't the whole community. Sometimes it was selected people. But they, we communed with plants in order to get knowledge to get wisdom and right now I feel where we are in this moment with the COVID-19 where everyone has had a moment to stop and reflect on themselves and everyone has noticed something isn't quite right well 
you are right, something isn't quite right, and the answer lies within plant medicine. Now, I'm not saying everyone needs to drink plant medicine, but understand, unless you do, you don't know, so you're not qualified to talk on it. But if you want to drink it, I'll sit down with you for hours and do, you can tell me what it is or what it isn't from your own experience. And I think this is where we are right now in this point in human history where we have, you know, you don't have to listen to the church. You don't have to listen to some person telling you what's right or wrong. There's an opportunity with countless other people just like you, just like me, that are having these experiences that are changing their lives. 60, 70, 80 year old people are drinking medicine. They're going back to when they were six years old and they're realizing that traumas that happened then have been plaguing them for their whole life. And this is a liberation of the soul. And this is where true happiness, love, and health can be found. Um, I traveled a lot in Central America and I, I always thought that it would happen there. And they say that ayahuasca finds you when it needs to find you and it just didn't find me there. Over lockdown, I was living with my family uh, and I kind of had a little bit of a meltdown like a couple of weeks ago. Just, you know, COVID, tension high. Ended up throwing my phone against a wall, which is something I've never done. Uh, and yeah, and so I was like, okay, I need to get away. And I was meant to just go to Marbella. And then um, I suddenly thought ayahuasca. I don't really know why. Maybe I think it was the plant calling me. Um, but yeah, so I'm typing ayahuasca, and then suddenly I find this place, and I email and they've got space and so the next day I'm on a plane and I'm here. <laughs> One of the people drinking ayahuasca for the first time was Roberto Vega Morales, an American guy now living near Amoraleza in the Granada region of Spain. Roberto is a scientist and had planned to use his analytical mind to figure out the effects of ayahuasca on his body. He even brought a notepad and pen into the ceremony so that he could take notes during his experience. Mother Ayahuasca had different ideas. So I'm a theoretical physicist um, at the University of Granada. A good friend of mine with a lot of experience in Ayahuasca, she gave me the advice a couple of weeks ago that I tried to go into it with an intention not of asking for something but to offer. And so, by the time I got here, my intention was to offer myself and surrender with still a hope of some sort of being healed and um, having some sort of communion with nature and, and visions of, of things in physics. But very quickly in the ceremony, all of that went out the window and Mama Ayahuasca told me you're here for a different reason tonight. I took the first cup and I felt the intelligence of, of the medicine, of the plant. I felt it scanning my body, looking, looking for something, for something that needed to be purged. And it would be here and say, no, that's not it. Here, no, that's not it. Here, no. And then it found, it found what it was looking for here. That was on the first cup. So then when I took the second cup, she went straight there and that's when she told me you're not here for any of these other things that you thought of you're not here to offer me anything or see or even to have ecstatic vision tonight you're here to grieve and she said that's all you're gonna do and I, I just accepted that she, she she motioned to me to follow her. I saw an old woman. And she just very subtly mentioned, just follow me. And tonight you're going to grieve. And that's it. And that's all it was. The whole time. What were you grieving for? Um, a lost relationship. Uh, this, we separated about a month ago. Six weeks, maybe, yeah, about a month ago, and I, she showed me that I hadn't grieved really. Um, I 
thought I had, but I hadn't really. And she made it very clear that this is what's going to happen to me. It's clear it's going to be painful, but I didn't feel afraid. And I didn't feel alone. I felt like I was being cared for. And as I was purging and, and having an emotional release, I had sort of a vision of myself in complete solitude in a bed. And she was kind of off in the distance. Far enough away to give me space to do what I needed to do, but close enough that I felt her presence and knew that I was being watched over. And so I didn't, I didn't feel fear. I felt incredible pain, but not fear. And, and that allowed me to fully release. Because I, I didn't have to worry about the fear. I could just be with the pain and release it. I got to a point where I realized I'm empty now. I'm empty. There's nothing left. And at that point, it was beautiful because the things that were causing me pain, I, I could feel they're not here anymore. They're here. They still exist, but now they're here. They're not in my body. They're, they're, out, they're you know, a few feet away, let's say. In the scientific world, mm. you guys usually provide explanations for everything. How do you explain ayahuasca? Well, it's very interesting because I went in with the mentality saying, I'm going to approach it scientifically. I'm going to observe. And, you know, I had my notebook. I was going to take notes. And very quickly, she made it clear that there's not going to be any scientists here today. This is going to be, you're here to grieve. I couldn't write anything down. You know, the scientific mind just disappeared. And I was just in my, in my pain and nothing else. She made it very clear that there will be no science done today. Uh, there will be no understanding. There will be no ecstatic visions or realizations. It's, it's grief. That is what you will do today. I don't know what will happen tonight if I'll continue this or I'll, I'll move on to a different phase. She'll tell me.
Santo, Dio, Sakina, Oline, Pato, Dio, Sakina, Oline, Pato, Dio, Sakina, Oline, When I go on the last of my soul, I come home. When I go on the last of my soul, I come home. Dear ones, dear ones, dear ones, dear unsettling tension that I've known uh, has been there for a very long time since I was a child and um, Aya called me. I mean it's, it's life-changing. It, I find it hard, you know, um, people ask how, how my ceremonies are and I can't quite put it into language. It's it's unexplainable. Um, it's been you know I've been to to hell and to heaven, um, seeing the lies and seeing the truth and seeing the black and the white and it's it's um, it's it's been hard. You know, like I, it's been the hardest journey of of my life. Um, I feel like I've lived a hundred lifetimes in three weeks um, but it's <laughs> I'm incredibly grateful the very deep sense that I need to be here for an undetermined period of time I've never in my life experienced uh, a, a community like this uh, a community of people that are living truth so deeply and it's something that I've wanted for so long but I haven't you know I wasn't I, I wasn't ready for it and and now I I am and I'm in a place where that can be fostered so so I will be here for for we will see but um, I have I have lots uh, more work to do and are you constant ayahuasca is the answer We are the answer. Ayahuasca is a very, very, very powerful tool. She's here to, to, to guide us, to take our hand. But we are the answer. This is all, this is all inside of us. It's literally like having an extended family. Like, you're my brother, you're my brother. I'm your sister. <laughs> <laughs> but only the weekends. Uh, no, it's literally everyone is just absolutely amazing. Um, everyone's full of love, kindness. We're all just trying to become better people. We're just trying to be happy, and 
um, the people that run this place they're, they're very special people but the second the second ceremony without this world literally I just remember laying back and I went to the other side and it was a beautiful experience it was love it was the geometric patterns it literally you're, you're in another realm and it's a very real realm it's not like you're hallucinating it, you know, it does change between absolute joy where you're dancing around and and then next thing you're obviously in your own little pit of despair you know you, you've got to go through the pain to get into the light and I'm still doing that even after six ceremonies um, but I'm actually I've been healed all the time all the time I'm being healed to destroy me with the medication sending me deep down deep and um, I knew that there'd be something else something else out there you know and it uh, messed with my mind and my intention was for quality there got to be another way and um, that was it but I didn't get that well I got that healing but it brought up all of other stuff you know childhood stuff um, and afterwards it made me realize yeah this is what it's about uh, childhood um, memories being angry with it uh, why me why this why is this happening to me it was like a rolodex of pictures turning and the pictures were coming in my visions and I can't remember these memories you know okay I know what the process is now. And I went through the motions, purged it out, and then I, let's carry on, let's go again. Yeah, it was, that was the healing. It was uh, not what I asked for. I got what I was given, what I needed. But after the retreat in the coming days, it just all made sense. And uh, speaking about it now, I could speak openly, freely about it. Because it's my story. It's my story. I've dealt with it. Okay? It doesn't cause me any interruptions in my daily life now. No anger issues. No looking back. The second retreat. Same here, Amrolita. Oh, I think that was June. June, July. Last year. And um, I was a big drinker. But not drink to get drunk. Maybe a blockage, blocking something out. And. Before I came for my insurance for living in France, I had to do a full body MOT checkup at the hospital. And my heart was, it was bad, very bad. It was um, full of fat surrounding my heart. My arteries were blocked. Um, and this was the day before I was flying out to come here. And on my mind was, I didn't need this information right now at this time, yeah. When I came to the retreat, my intention was to open my heart, be more receptive, and heal my heart, you know? And uh, when it healed it, but I was lucky, there's a man there called Gabriel, and I was so deep, and I, I transformed into a, a condor with my visions. It was amazing. And he, he took me outside, sat me under a tree, and he did a, a ceremony one-to-one -one with me. I think it was a cleansing ceremony. And I could feel myself vibrating. <laughs> yeah, my whole body vibrating. In the morning, I needed the toilet so bad. And I went to the toilet, and all I can describe what came out was, um, 
liquid butter, you know? So I had to put it on like that, liquid butter. And then when I flew back to my home on the Monday, I was going to see another heart specialist very quick for treatment to, to, to heal my heart, yeah? But all my blood pressure was through the roof, you know? Boiling point. Check my blood pressure. Okay, different one, doesn't work. Try it again. That's fine, strange. Then he uh, listened to my heart, did a, an ultrasound scan around me. He said, you're fine. There's nothing wrong with your heart. I said, there is. I said, it's on the paperwork there. He goes, I know, I can't believe what's happened. But I said, uh, in a weekend, what have you, what have you done? I said, ayahuasca. Yeah? And uh, it healed my heart. But full healthy heart, no fat surrounding, uh, cholesterol levels fine, blood pressure, perfect. He was amazed. He was absolutely gobsmacked. But then uh, I had to go and see another guy, I think he was in Strasbourg, to do the running on a running machine. Yeah, went for Christie. You know? Perfect. Nothing wrong with you. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Another guy who had travelled from England to Spain for the retreat was Arthur Walsh. He was at Amoraliza to drink ayahuasca for the first time. I just spent a lot of time just trying to learn about why we should do things like access um, traumas in our life and trying to understand deep parts of our consciousness. Um, and a lot of what I've learned, the kind of fundamental truth is that you need to know yourself um, as much as possible and only once you know yourself are you able to then know and love and serve others. So my first ceremony was uh, I was very nervous for it. At the time I didn't realise how probably stressed and anxious I was um, but when it's happening even if you're having a bad experience you're not well, for me, I wasn't really processing that I was having a bad experience. Uh, yeah, I was definitely resisting a lot and I was feeling it a lot in my body, kind of writhing around. Um, it was only until I did it again the second night that I realised that <clears throat> I was really stressed and anxious. And I'd said to myself, I think that's because <clears throat> I feel stressed and anxious in my day-to-day -day life. And therefore going into the, the first ceremony, and still feeling stressed and anxious, it just felt very normal, so I'd normalised that state of mind. In the second ceremony, I drank again and was starting along the same path of kind of resisting and not really liking what was going on. And then there was a moment where I was able to sit still, just look at the fire, um, and everything became very clear and, and pure and it felt really good. So I finally had surrendered uh, to, the, to the medicine. And yeah, you know, after that I was able to like really love other people in the room and like send out good energy if they were having a bad time. So just thinking back to what I said before about only being able to love others as much as you can like be present and love yourself. It just seemed like a uh, like a really instant representation of that kind of school of thought. Um, and then also afterwards I kind of like the visions and the whole night just became pretty fun. It was bliss. I saw my mother ayahuasca in the in the stars in the form of the constellation. Um, and all came very beautiful. I was able to just dance very freely and sing. Yeah, it was good. And what will you take away from this weekend when you go back to your home life? Well, hopefully just try not feeling stressed and anxious about stuff. Because in, in my day-to-day -day life, it's similar in that experience where I'm kind of physically and mentally like darting between things and not truly being, being present when, when I'm doing something. Um, and in turn, once I've done that, learn to love more. And yeah, the big thing I want to do is tell my parents that I love them, especially my dad, because um, I just think that's important to to do for, for them and for, for me. I wake up every day, and I just think I just think I'm so lucky that I've I finally you know got an answer and I got a solution. Um, and now I just I've got so much more energy. The energy is sort of like. The energy that was pushing me down is like, I've, that's now pushing me along. Um, yeah, I've got, I've got plans to, to uh, open a retreat in, in Spain. <laughs> uh, 
holistic retreat. Uh, so that's the plan. And, and, and I want to share this. Yeah, I, just like yourself, I want to share this with as many people as I possibly can. So it's changed, it's changed everything. Yeah. There's, there's many different ways of drinking ayahuasca, many different traditions. Um, with some traditions, they work more with the darkness, and we like to work more with, with the light, um, which doesn't mean not going into the darkness and not seeing the darkness, because I think it does need to be seen, it does need to be felt. But the point is not to get stuck there, because it's very easy to play the victim and to be stuck in the pain and constantly be digging, you know, digging and digging for more trauma and more pain and just trying to release everything that has ever happened to us. But at some point I feel we just need to stop. If, you know, if it's going to come to us, um, if we're going to feel pain, if we're going to feel some sort of trauma, then in that moment, feel it, live it in order to release it. But we don't need to focus on it. And a lot of the, sing the songs that we sing are about transforming the pain. And I believe with the heart energy, we can transform anything. And there's a big difference between pain and suffering. And for me, this is also very key in the work that we do, is that, sure, we can fe feel pain, but then it's a choice of whether we choose to feel suffering or not. Because we can feel the pain, accept it, um, but if we're focusing on it, and that's where we're putting our attention, then we just move into suffering. If we could just accept it and take a step back, and give gratitude for what it has taught us, what it has shown us, where it has brought us in our lives, and then transform it into something different, um, then we don't need to suffer. And then we could just use it as a teaching and, and give thanks for, for all the teachings that we received, especially the painful ones, because I feel those are the ones that really make us who we are today. Is the, the traumas, the difficulties, are what make us tough. Um, so I think it's very important to learn to, to use the energy of transformation and to bring celebration into every aspect of life because that's what we're essentially here to do. We're here to be joyful. We're here to be happy. We're here to celebrate um, so we can bring that into every single moment. Generally, anybody who is, um, is reasonably healthy can, can drink. There's obviously some conditions which mean that you can't drink ayahuasca if you have severe heart conditions, um, you know, severe breathing difficulties, uh, psychosis. So besides, besides those problems, there aren't very many reasons why someone wouldn't be able to drink. But it really needs to come from inside. So this is very important. I can never recommend to somebody that, oh, you should come and drink ayahuasca with us because I can't take that on that kind of responsibility. It really needs to be a calling that comes from inside. So I think if anybody has the calling um, and doesn't have any reason why they shouldn't participate, then, then they, they should follow, follow their, their intuition. Um, but it really does need to come from inside. So some people are interested, um, do some research, maybe take a little bit of time. Um, sometimes they plan a ceremony and it doesn't happen, and I feel the medicine always comes at the right time. So the medicine will come to you exactly when you need it. It won't come before, it won't come after. <laughs>